Iron Man. Based on a film treatment by Roy Thomas and Stuart Gordon. Adapted by Tim Maxwell. In a world teetering on the brink of chaos, one hero stands between order and oblivion. Iron Man, the Golden Avenger. Clad in technologically advanced, solar-powered armor, he is the mightiest fighting force on the planet. A one-man armored division with the firepower of an entire army his suit boasts magnetic power, powerful repulsor rays, and flight rockets, making him a nearly indestructible force. Yet, a question lingers. Is Iron Man truly a man, or a remote-controlled robot, operated by a hidden genius? Only one person knows the truth, his creator. Anthony Tony Stark is that creator. To the public, he is a modern-day Howard Hughes, a mustachioed playboy with more money than Daniel Ludwig and more beautiful women than Warren Beatty ever dreamed of. His fortune stems from his unparalleled genius in military technology. But beneath this glossy exterior beats a flawed heart one that is dangerously vulnerable to a devastating heart attack, especially when stressed and fueled by one too many drinks. These two identities, Iron Man and Tony Stark, appear as different as night and day. Yet, they are one and the same, embodying the paradox of power and vulnerability. Tony Stark is a man devoted to fighting evil in all its forms, living a double life known only to his closest confidant, Jim Rhodes. Jim Rhodes, also known as Rhodey, is a hard luck veteran whose courage transformed him from an unemployed ex-soldier to Tony Stark's trusted friend and confidant. He alone knows the man inside the Iron Man armor is Tony Stark. With a blend of toughness and loyalty, Rhodey supports Tony in his mission to protect the world. However, a new threat looms on the horizon, Anubis, the Prince of Terrorists. Feared and hated worldwide, Anubis has adopted the name of the ancient Egyptian god of death and aims to surpass his namesake in causing destruction. His dream is to unleash his brand of savage terrorism on American soil, and the Armageddon tank is central to his nightmare vision. In a tale of courage, betrayal, and redemption, Tony Stark must navigate the treacherous waters of corporate espionage and international terrorism. As Iron Man, he will face Anubis and his terrifying Armageddon tank in a battle that will determine the fate of countless lives and the future of Stark Industries. Can Tony Stark, the flawed genius, and Iron Man, the mighty warrior, overcome their greatest challenge yet. Only time will tell in this gripping saga of heroism and sacrifice. In the aftermath of the Cold War, the world remained volatile with conflict simmering from the Americas to the Middle East. 
This new landscape demanded advanced warfare technologies, and two rival inventions emerged as contenders for lucrative defense contracts. The Iron Man robot from Stark Industries and the Armageddon supertank from Stain International. Both promised unparalleled power, but only one could secure the billions at stake. The stage was set for a dramatic demonstration. Iron Man and Armageddon clashed in a fierce yet inconclusive battle, all under the watchful eyes of Department of Defense officials and military brass. Among the spectators were Benton Blandings, a major stockholder of Stark Industries, his daughter Kimberly, who was also Tony Stark's fiance, Patricia Pepper Potts, Stark's brilliant and attractive secretary, and Obadiah Stain, the owner of Stain International. Unknown to all but a select few, Tony Stark had made a daring decision. Realizing a mere robot wouldn't suffice, he had adapted the Iron Man armor to fit himself, risking his life in the untested suit. The battle, however, proved too much for the armor. The Armageddon tank overpowered Iron Man, crushing him beneath its massive weight. Tony was injured, the suit destroyed, but he narrowly escaped death and discovery, thanks to the quick thinking of Rhodey, a new security guard. In exchange for Rhodey's silence about the man inside the armor, Stark offered him a job as his personal bodyguard. Beneath Tony's composed exterior lay vulnerabilities. The pressure of securing the defense contract and saving Stark Industries drove him to drink more than was healthy. Concerned, Rhodey enlisted the help of his friend, Dr. Laura Hill, to intervene. She warned Tony that his drinking could lead to a heart attack. While he promised to consider her advice, there was an undeniable spark between them. Meanwhile, Obadiah Stane plotted to seize control of Stark Industries. He secretly allied with Anubis, an Egyptian-born terrorist for hire. Anubis, whose symbol was the ancient god of death, had his own agenda to acquire the Armageddon tank as the cornerstone of his terror organization. Even Stain underestimated Anubis' fervor for his cause. Anubis launched a surprise attack on Tony, trapping him inside the automated assembly line at Stark's New Jersey plant. The robotic arms, reprogrammed to kill, almost succeeded but Tony narrowly escaped. This near-death experience was only the beginning. Stain and Blandings, now united, maneuvered to wrest control of Stark Industries from Tony. During a critical board meeting, Pepper stalled the takeover as long as possible giving Tony time to retreat to his private lab. There, he worked feverishly on the newly improved Iron Man armor, determined to keep it out of his enemy's hands. But the relentless stress took its toll. As Tony made final adjustments, a sharp pain pierced his chest. The heart attack Dr. Hill had warned him about had struck. Tony Stark, a genius inventor and flawed hero, faced his greatest challenge yet. The battle for Stark Industries and his own life had only just begun. Armed guards burst into the lab, their weapons drawn and ready. They were met by Iron Man with Tony Stark inside the suit. Using his repulsor rays, Tony sent the guards sprawling, 
breaking free and flying away. The special chest plate within the armor had acted as a pacemaker, saving him from the heart attack's ravages. From that moment on, Stark would need to wear the chest plate constantly to survive. Gasping for breath, he used his last ounce of strength to reach Dr. Laura Hill's office. Tony's identity as Iron Man was revealed to Laura as she pulled him back from the brink of death. This revelation drew her closer to him, but she was torn. Stain had gotten to her, and she had become his paid agent, believing that the clinic's need for money to treat the poor justified her actions as an industrial spy. Soon after, Anubis and Iron Man clashed. Anubis put a gun to Laura's head, forcing Tony to hand over the armor to save her life. Anubis killed her anyway, with Tony watching helplessly before being taken captive himself. The Iron Man armor was now in the hands of the world's most dangerous man. Anubis planned to combine the armor with the Armageddon tank, aiming to become the undisputed king of terrorism. Anubis tried to exploit Tony's need for a drink to force him to reveal the suit's secrets, knowing that only Stark could operate it. He killed Stain and took the mini-pack that would allow him to activate the super tank, leaving one of his men to wear down Stark. Anubis knew that without his armor, Tony was vulnerable to another fatal heart attack. At a gala party at Gracie Mansion, the official residence of New York's mayor, Anubis activated the Armageddon prototype on display, wreaking havoc. His terrorists took over the mansion, demanding an exorbitant ransom for the mayor, Benton Blandings, Kimberly, and others. If the ransom wasn't paid, he threatened to kill the hostages and level New York with Armageddon. Overcoming his craving for a drink, Tony managed to escape his prison, reclaiming the Iron Man armor. He radioed Rhodey and Pepper for help. Meanwhile, Anubis's minions dynamited all bridges and subways, sealing off Manhattan Anubis took Armageddon for a test drive, destroying an Apache helicopter and obliterating several landmarks. The city's time was running out, and with it, the lives of the hostages. In a final, desperate battle, Iron Man faced off against Anubis. The stakes had never been higher, as Tony fought, not just for his own survival, but for the lives of countless others. With every repulsor blast and every maneuver, he pushed his armor to its limits, driven by the memory of Laura and the determination to stop Anubis once and for all. In the hazy light of sunset, a sudden streak of red and gold split the sky as Iron Man launched a surprise attack on Anubis. Inside the super tank Armageddon, Anubis grinned with malevolent satisfaction. The tank, a gargantuan behemoth, bristled with more firepower than Stark's armor could ever hope to match. As night fell, Iron Man's solar-powered charge began to dwindle, putting him at a severe disadvantage. High above, Pepper Potts watched the unfolding chaos with mounting dread. Her keen eyes followed every movement, noting the diminishing glow of Iron Man's arc reactor. Desperation welled up inside her as she turned to Rhodey, her mind racing. She knew the party's Klieg lights might just provide the power Iron Man's suit desperately needed. 
Rhodey, understanding the gravity of the situation, steeled himself for a daring mission. Breaking through the armed terrorists, guarding the control room would be no easy feat. But he had no choice. As Rhodey made his way toward the control room, Iron Man discovered a horrifying secret inside the tank. Anubis never intended to take the tank prototype with him. His plan was far more sinister. Armageddon was rigged to explode, a nuclear device set to annihilate a large portion of the city. Anubis planned to escape via a submarine set to surface in the East River, leaving chaos and destruction in his wake. The nuclear clock began ticking, leaving precious little time. Iron Man and Armageddon clashed once more in a titanic battle. The tank's immense weight and relentless firepower pushed Iron Man to his limits. His suit's power was almost depleted, the strain threatening to cause Stark a fatal coronary. As the timer ticked down, every second felt like an eternity. Just when all seemed lost, Rhodey managed to reach the control room. He fought his way through the terrorists, activating the Klieg lights, which blazed to life, casting a brilliant flood of energy towards Iron Man. With this renewed power coursing through his suit, Iron Man surged with strength. He overturned the tank with a mighty effort tearing into its armored shell to reach Anubis. The nuclear timer was only moments away from triggering Armageddon's deadly payload, summoning every ounce of his remaining energy. Iron Man pushed the super tank towards the East River. The tank sank rapidly, trapping Anubis inside, who struggled in vain as the cold waters engulfed him. In the nick of time, Iron Man deactivated the triggering device, averting the nuclear explosion that would have devastated the city. Using his magnetic rays, he pulled the escaped submarine aground, where the police quickly overpowered the remaining terrorists. Rhodey and Pepper rushed to Iron Man's side, finding him collapsed and immobile. As they carefully removed the helmet, Rhodey braced himself, fearing the worst. But to his astonishment, the armor was empty. Moments later, Tony Stark staggered into view, wearing the pace, making chestplate beneath his regular clothes. He claimed he had been controlling the robot from afar, a ruse to protect his true identity. With Benton Blandings, Assuring Tony that he would regain control of Stark Industries, Tony made a solemn declaration. The power and responsibility of Iron Man were too great to be entrusted to the military or anyone else. For now, and for the foreseeable future, there could only be one Iron Man. The world, he vowed, would continue to be protected by the hero within the armor. As dawn broke over the city, the people of New York awoke to a new day. Unaware of the heroism that had saved them from the brink of destruction, Tony Stark, battered but unbroken, knew his fight was far from over. The world was a dangerous place, and as long as threats loomed, Iron Man would be there to stand against them.